So at this point, um, we see that you know we have we have the BLE uh, resources here, and we're connecting up to the GPIO pin. But how are you going to prove to me, Richard, that this is actually working? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And for embedded developers, one of the biggest engineering challenges today is moving from their traditional uh, firmware development or analog or digital uh, component work um, into this world of IoT systems uh, where you have to connect to the cloud and oftentimes you're doing that uh, over wireless, which is black magic, frankly, to a lot of people. And to help us uh, navigate this uh, this brave new world, we have Richard Laborde, who is of Atmosphere. IoT. How you doing, Richard? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. We, I know that uh, Atmosphere IoT is focused on uh, making some of those challenges a little bit simpler or easier to digest um, for embedded developers. Um, can you show us a little bit of what you guys are working on over there to fast track uh, connecting devices to uh, the Internet of Things? Sure, we can do that a project that I've used in the past. Um, it's using the Huzzah. It's also using a, uh, a ground moisture sensor. So something that you could stick in your flower pot if you were leaving on vacation, mm -hmm. and you could have this device hooked up to the cloud, and you could, in the cloud, see the moisture of your device, which, mm -hmm. you know, for a basic IoT application, pretty cool. Something everyone needs. E exactly. <laughs> so, uh, some of the items that are on the elements that are here in the palette are going to be familiar. We've got an interval timer. In this case, it's hooked up to an ADC pin because that's the way this had to be wired. Um, a lot of kits have uh, shields or pluggable connectors for multiple sensors where you don't necessarily need to directly wire a pin, but you mm -hmm. can. Um, one of the beauties of that, and I can show you in the element library, we have sensors from many different sensor manufacturers as well as communication platforms like a Sigfox Click, for example, or uh, a cellular modem from Digi, um, in addition to lots and lots of sensors. And some of those sensors are on shields, like if you were using an Arduino form factor. So when you plug that, when you add one of these sensors uh, to your project, uh, all of the code necessary to use it in that particular way are added in. So here's the thing that I just imported and I can click on it. And now if I had an LIS to DW12, I could connect it to my interval timer and I would be able to pull sensor data off of that sensor. There's a hardware abstraction layer that makes it easy for all of these elements to be added to any project. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a part of that, it's, it's adding all of the drivers for that particular sensor. It knows which pin it's on. It, it knows all of that information. So, so if, you're working with a, if you're working with something that's got a shield, it's super easy. That's great. So at this point, um, we see that you know we have we have the BLE uh, resources here, and we're connecting up to the GPIO pin. But how are you going to prove to me, Richard, that this is actually working? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> and in this case, we're using the interval to to read the ADC pin. Uh, we're pushing that data to a BLE characteristic, and then we've also added this extra BLE characteristic. Um, it is both of those BLE characteristics are linked to the application, because in the case of a BLE app, you're, we're going to use a mobile phone and an app on a mobile phone as the gateway to the cloud. So in this part of the workspace, you can see we have an interval timer reading the sensor's BLE characteristic, and we're going to push that data to an analog meter and also to the cloud. But we've also created a toggle button and wired that up to the BLE characteristic. And so if you look over here, you can see this red toggle red LED button is this toggle button that's defined in the workspace. And then I've, I've added a background. I've got a little Atmosphere IoT logo here. If we want to make it even a better project, you know, we can add another image and we'll put that one down here. And we can browse for a really nice image that we can add into our project. Look at that. Make it, you know, 375 wide. And then we can bring it to the front and voila, 
we have an embedded computing design mobile application. So the last thing, I guess, we did push the data to a cloud event. And so if we go into the cloud, we're not doing much with that, and but we are particularly saving it to cloud storage, which allows us to both create widgets in the cloud for uh, immediate display, but also for uh, doing graphing so we can do time series data as well. But I don't think we're done yet, right? You're going to show us what's actually happening on an application, right? Yeah. So again, we're going to compile the project in the background. The platform is taking all of the code that we wrote in the embedded side and in the cloud and the application. It's wrapping all of that up, it's, it's compiling it against the native SDK, in this case, the Espressive SDK for the ESP32. Um, so, so what that provides is uh, if you start here and get your project doing what you want, but you need to add some secret sauce that's a part of your company's intellectual property, but it's not something that you found easy to do by going into the code editor and you know adding in a line and typing whatever you wanna type, um, you do have the ability to export that code using the download button. Um, and what that will do is it takes the files that are packaged up in that compiling process and it will export all of them as a zip file. Um, that zip file can then be unzipped and imported directly back into that native tool of the silicon manufacturer. So next step for us, we're gonna program the firmware on our Huzzah 32. We've already picked the serial port. And so if I go into my devices, uh, you can see that there's a couple of legacy devices in there. I have uh, the little box and plus sign in the upper right-hand corner is the add a new device. So it's adding a device. It found a device in range. I can look at that title and recognize that that is the project title that I gave this project. So I know it's my device. If I click on that, um, in the background, the device is going to begin provisioning. And so the mobile device is negotiating with the development kit. Uh, ESP32, because it's a Wi-Fi, in addition to BLE, it's asking if you want to add some Wi-Fi settings. In this case, I don't because I'm only using BLE. So here's our application. Um, and if I put something that's got some humidity to it on my soil moisture sensor. I can see that I've now got a reading. If I click the toggle red LED button, I'm, I can toggle my red LED. Then if I go back, because I've now provisioned this device, remember we save data into the cloud, I can go to my devices. And here's my ECD device. And so I now have a digital reading of my soil moisture, and I've got some time series data that's updating every 15 seconds for what is actually going on in my flower pot on my window. Wow. So we did all this uh, in, well, I didn't do much. You did all this. <laughs> <laughs> you did all this in, in what, like 10, 10 minutes or so. It, it, you're, we're, we're up and running from development kit to a working prototype with an IoT application, uh, mobile application and everything. Right. And, and that's kind of the beauty of this. That's great. Well, hey, uh, Richard, uh, I want to thank you for helping us demystify some of this uh, IoT development for both novices and for experienced embedded engineers. Um, if somebody's looking to take advantage um, of Atmosphere IoT, maybe even just uh, test it out, you mentioned something about having um, a few devices uh, for free. Can you give us a little bit more info about that? Yeah, sure. So all of the initial developer accounts are going to be a free developer account. You can go to our website at atmosphereiot.com, uh, follow the links to the platform and you click on the getting started. You can create a free account. Uh, you're able to create five devices and have data, live data in the cloud for free. Uh, if you want to add a new device, you can remove one of your older devices. If you want to do a pilot and you want to do something more than that, we have a professional option, which gives you 25 devices. If you have an existing product that's already able to push data somewhere, but you don't have cloud infrastructure, you could create a, an enterprise account and be able to push that data directly into our cloud and use our widgets to be able to display and send alerts and all of that fun stuff. 
Well, uh, that was Richard Laborde of uh, Atmosphere IoT, um, helping us demystify some of the complexities of um, IoT engineering. If you'd like to find out more, as Richard noted, um, you can visit them on their website at www.atmosphereiot.com. Thanks for watching Embedded Toolbox, and we'll see you next time.